Welcome in to Inside Carolina Post Game Live, presented to you by Johnny T. Presented to you by Blue Shark Vodka. <laughs> Johnny T. Shirts are our, our, our podcast sponsor, and Jimmy's Famous Seafood. I'm your host, Ross Martin, joined as always by Sean Drone, former UNC running back. The Tar Heels defeat the Blue Devils 38 7 to move to 3 2 overall and even it out 2 2 in the ACC. They've now played four. ACC games and four Coastal games. Has so, it been that many already? Yeah, and this is Duke's first uh, ACC game. Kind of odd scheduling quirk there. Tar Heels win 38-7. Let's go through some stats real quick before we get to our key plays, player of the game, and key takeaways. UNC, 457 total yards. They had 135 on the ground, 321 through the air. Sam Howe, 18 for 32 for 321 yards, three touchdowns. Ty Chandler, we'll get to him. Had a big game. Josh Downs, eight receptions, 168 yards, and one score. Three different Tar Heels scored through the air. Sean, we'll go to you here. What's your initial takeaways? Let's get into it before we go to our segments. Uh, first takeaway was we got to win. You know, that was big. You know, we, we showed up um, this week. Um, you know, we talked about it before. Who, who would they be this week? You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, so, you know, it's good that they showed up. Um, had a few explosive plays, but not as many as, you know, we all would love love to see. But um, they showed up, got the win, and, um, you know, some bright spots and some negatives, as always. I think our, I think the defense played really well. Defense played. I, lights, we're gonna I would say lights out, but they did play a lot better. And especially in the first half when Duke was in their side of the yeah. field, in yeah. the red zone, or, or, you know, within within the 40, mm -hmm. they made fourth down stops, third down stops, Absolutely. and forced them to kick field goals or to turn over on downs. Punt. I think they had eight punts uh, after – Halftime, I think, it was. including a 15-yard punt when they punted within their own territory by Duke. <laughs> um, so out of the defense played an outstanding game. They yeah. had the one touchdown, yeah. the one touchdown at the beginning of the, of the second half. Second but after half. that, it was yeah. kind of a clean slate. Right. A lot of players stood out. Offense, we'll get into still a couple issues to work through, but some positive Overalls. things. Yeah, yeah. and Overalls. we'll definitely talk about the run game and, and passing game. I mean, there's still the offense is not clicking as much. As we would thought, just that, like I said last week, we don't have an identity. It's yeah. every week is something different. We don't have, okay, the Tar Heels coming to town. What are they going to do? Oh, yeah. we know what they're going to. We don't know from week to week, and that's the that's the hard part about watching the games. Yeah, we really just don't have an identity. I was uh, in the middle of the game. I was like, man, they haven't really established a run. They're not run going again. back to back runs. They're not running on first down. They throw a lot on first down, and it's, it's second and ten, so they yeah. have to throw again. Right. You know, they're not getting those three, four yards you need and really pounding. Exactly. So the run game's not there, and they really miss a lot on throws. Yeah. A lot of negatives, but look, they beat Duke. They beat the rival. Yeah. The game just ended, so we don't know. They probably just kept the victory bell. The victory bell was at stake. Three straight wins for Mac Brown over Duke now. It's kind of, uh, I think, the trending. I think Duke's going a little downhill, and UNC's <laughs> slowly, slowly, slowly <laughs> trying to make it up here. Yeah. Uh, before we start, I want to talk to you about Blue Shark Vodka. Get a, a quick reading on Blue Shark, smoothest vodka in the world, made in and produced in Wilmington, North Carolina. Connor Barth has partnered with them and us to sponsor this show. So definitely want to mention Blue Shark Vodka at the top, available in all 100 counties. We'll talk about them more. First, the key plays of the game. Those are brought to you by Jimmy Seafood. Not Jimmy T-shirts. That's right. We got so many sponsors here. We got Giant T-shirt on podcast, <laughs> Blue Shark Vodka. We got uh, Thanks, Jimmy. Jimmy Seafood out of Maryland. Huge Carolina fans. They sponsor um, NIL deals with Armando Baycott and Dawson Garcia on the basketball, uh, basketball side. They will ship anywhere in the United States. Give them a big party, a tailgate. Go to jimmysfamousseafood.com. Get some crab cakes, get some fresh crabs, dip, all you want. Jimmy's Famous Seafood. Um, they support. They love the Heels. They're sponsoring us, sponsoring Taylor Vipolish's show. They support basketball guys on the court. Yeah. So Jimmy's Famous Seafood. All right, key plays. Key plays. Let's, Let's start off. Ty Chandler's 75-yard passing play. Yeah. Kind of broke open the game at the beginning. What did you see on that play? It was the first score, I believe, for UNC. Yeah, it was. Um, on that play, it was actually a, a really good job by Sam just avoiding the rush, um, you know, and, and really making a play down the field. Um, they were actually, it was, I think it was a third down play, and they brought, they brought five. Mm -hmm. And uh, the inside backer who had, it was uh, a blitz man, and uh, the inside backer that had Ty had to peel, and, he, and Ty ran a, a free release, wheel route, wheel route down the sideline, and uh, like I said, Sam avoided the rush to, to drop it down, um, you know, downfield to, to make a big play. And of course, 
put the hands, uh, put the ball in his hands. He made a big play. Um, had a had a little thought he was going to go down, and get the <laughs> had a turf bounce to get him. But <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a good touchdown. It was good to see him have an explosive play, show yeah. the speed, exactly. Flash the Ty Chandler, the, the SEC running back, come from Tennessee. Ty Chandler saying five yard run. So was that a design play for him? Or did he lurk out once he kind of saw what was going on? So they actually had a lot, what I um, saw today, they had a lot of um, option routes for him. Okay. Uh, got him involved in the passing game, which I thought was very uh, creative by Longo. Uh, just getting him out and, uh, you know, with option routes, um, as a back in the shotgun, you, you arc release and you read the um, who you assume is going to have you, which is typically the outside backer. Sometimes they'll have the backer walked up on the line of scrimmage and he'll peel just like, uh, you know, and he was walked up just like the play um, he had the touchdown on and he had to peel with him um, once he free released. Um, and, you know, with that, that's, uh, that's what that's what Ty had. Yeah, and then Sam has to make the play, make yeah. the right pass, hit yeah. in stride. Ty Chandler goes for Sam, five yards, the first score. Producer John? UNC's first two drives ended in punts as well, so that Chandler drive seemed to sort of spark the offense. Mm -hmm. Keenan Stadium was a little quiet at that point, so it also felt like that was a huge boost to the confidence a little bit to get everyone, you know, relaxed in what was ultimately a blowout win for North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. producer John. Not, not only does explosive plays help us in the game, it helps the fans, John. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it was you know, kind of a sleepy 12 o'clock kick. We've had yeah. UNC's at night games. I think every right. game has been a 7.30, 7 o'clock kick. You know, as the sun was out, it was hot, sitting there sweating, getting sunburned. Um, and the, the crowd, the blue seats makes it look a little bit better than it really is in there <laughs> because it definitely was not full. All right, um, get your questions in. Questions on Facebook and on YouTube. Ask your questions, comments, hot takes, you know, anything you got want for myself or Sean. All right. Continue the, the key plays. Yeah, the second one. This is my favorite. The forced fumble by Kevin Hester on the quarterback. Oh, yeah. Knocked the ball loose and a real awesome scoop and score by safety Trey Morrison who took the ball for six. I thought it was an awesome play all around. They reviewed it. Um, they, the ruling on the field stood. Yeah. And great heads-up play by Morrison to get right. in stride and run to, in. To actually keep going. It's a tough yeah. play. Yeah. Hester, the big man getting loose out there yeah. with the sack fumble. I mean, I think that was a, a great effort play by him. I mean, he could have gave up, you know, on the throw, but got his hands in the lane and got his hands on the arm, on the arm of the quarterback. And, uh, you know, they made a good play. Yeah, and I mean, shout out to, to Trey Morrison. We don't talk about him a lot. You know, he's yeah. been up. He's been a flasher, you know, yeah, here and, and there. And, you know, he's been a starter for three years now. He's yeah. just a small, and I, I think people just don't think about much, but he's, yeah. he plays a lot, starting safety, and just, you know, his little guys get down there. They tell the, the school, school guys to scoop it up and run. Right. Big Being guys fall on it. Um, he ran for six. That was awesome. Yeah. That's the kind of plays you need. That's winning football. Making plays like that, opportunistic football. Mm -hmm. um, it was only the second defensive touchdown for the second Mac Brown really? era. Oh, really? Yeah, so they've only had two defensive touchdowns in three years, and that was the second one. Oh, man. All right. We need and more of those from the defense. It, it changes the game. I mean, yeah, that, that put up, was that the, I think that was the second touchdown for UNC, so mm -hmm. it was 14 0 at that point. Right. And then Morales' touchdown, key yeah. play number three, put up 21 0, which is a quick mm -hmm. play from Morales. Off a seven-play, 67-yard drive, uh, Sam hit Morales. He stepped around the defender. Defender flew by, and Morales walked into the end zone. You like Morales he, recently? I, I really do. I mean, I'm, he he's flashed the uh, I believe it was the second game because I don't think he played much uh, versus Virginia Tech, but he's been flashing every week. You know, as a as a Sam Howell favorite to me, mm -hmm. um, and he's getting open, which is important. Um, you know, you, we had the receivers, which you know, the down the field. Um, you know, explosive play type guys, but when you have that short to intermediate um, guy that you can go to and he's a threat, you know, that gives the, you know, opens up the offense a little bit more, and I think Morales has been that guy. Yeah, and look, Gary Walson had a, a drop or two, and Morales seems to be the guy who makes plays and up. has a little nose for the end zone, a yeah. little bit more of a little bit wiggle there from Morales. More athletic, I think, too. Mm -hmm. So the key plays there, Ty Chandler saying five-yard run, the forced fumble, by Kevin Hester, kind of a, a defensive lineman we don't know too much about. Yeah. Morrison for six, and then the Morales touchdown pass uh, off a 67-yard drive to make it 21-0 in the first half for halftime. And at that point, outside of Duke's um, big run at the first play yeah. uh, that made it 21-7, UNC kind of put it away off a of Josh Downs touchdown mm -hmm. and a Ty Chandler touchdown, I believe. I think maybe one other touchdown. Okay, players of the game. It's, actually, do we have any questions right now, John? Questions, comments from producer John. You yeah, give a we shout have. Shout out to your buddy here. <laughs> shout out to my guy Ryan Primetime Jones. 
all the way from Tarboro, North Carolina. Y'all check him out. He has a podcast, Raw Mind Sports. The guy has always been a, a sports mind since high school. He, <laughs> lo- he, lo- he loves to, de- to debate with you. Uh, check his podcast out. Uh, we got a, just go ahead. A guest in studio from, yeah, from, uh, studio. from Sean's hometown. Yeah. Sean, all right, John. We have our first question of the day from YouTube. This is from Charlie Justice on YouTube. He asks, why is the O-line so bad when all that was talked about during the offseason was how many vets we'd have returning? What do you guys think about the offensive line? I know we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but this was a group that had a lot of veteran starters returning. Yeah, I, I'm, I got that same question. Um, we talked about it last week, or the week before that too. So yeah. it's, been a, it's been a question for, for everybody, and I, I really don't understand, like, what it is, but I think, and again, we just don't have an identity. And I think every week they're probably learning something, some type of new wrinkle um, to the offense. And I think that's, you know, and it shouldn't be a problem with the veteran guys, but it, it's clearly a problem and we, we haven't been able to solve it. Um, and, you know, they're not protecting Sam like they um, should should be or mm-hmm. like they have. And it's, you know, it's making Sam, you know, pretty – Iffy, you know what I mean. He, I mean, he's still making plays, but you know, it, it it's it's a spot where we definitely have to improve on. Yeah, I think there's some injury issues. We I think UNC played three different centers today, and that yeah, continuity that was... at the most important spot. We had a backup left tackle playing center for much of the first yeah. half before Brian Anderson came back in, and then Quirion Johnson came in as well. So, yeah. and the center is kind of like the quarterback of the O line. Yeah, he's the second important. quarterback of the team because he's he's pointing where where we're sliding for a slide protection. Who's the Who's the mic? Who was sliding to? You know, all, all these type of things that yep. a center really has to know. It's a reason why Jeff Saturday was, was uh, man his quarterback for years. He was the second quarterback on the field. And you have a backup left tackle who's maybe played center for maybe one week now in practice, and starting at center. Right. I mean, luckily Duke wasn't that great, and, exactly. and UNT was able to exactly. take advantage there. Yep. All right, players of the game. Before we get players of the game, we'll do the full Blue Shark Vodka read. Blue Shark Vodka out of Wrightsville, Wilmington, partnered with Connor Barth. It's a small, family-owned vodka company based out of North Carolina, made with North Carolina sweet corn to make a really smooth, mellow flavor. It's a it's, uh, very accessible price point found in 100 counties in North Carolina, and it's mellow 28 days to get the full flavor, smooth, the smoothest vodka in the world. Like it with a little soda water, a little seltzer water, a little fruit juice, a little pineapple juice, Ooh. twist of a lime, a little tropical spicy. flavor there. Um, you can mix it with some ginger beer and some lime juice for a Carolina mule. It's very versatile and it takes on the flavor, whatever you mix it with. I was using some basil before my basil plants died. I was about to say, tell them about your yeah. salad drink. <laughs> yes, a little basil, a little, uh, a little basil simple syrup, a little muddled basil. A little, um, put some little lime in there, a little blueberry, whatever you want, man. You make it uh, a little, little savory, a little sweet. Blue Shark Vodka, shout out to them and Connor Barth and all those guys out of Wrights from the Carolina. Local, family owned company. So you're going through the ABC stores, you see the, the big name, the corporate sponsored, the, the corporate vodkas, and you see the small family owned ones at a special price point. Check out Blue Shark Vodka, North Carolina, <laughs> family owned, all 100 counties. All right, Sean. Players of the game. I'm going to start. Cam Kelly. Cam Kelly. Cam Kelly. We haven't said his name, I don't think, one time nah, on this show. All. He yeah. had interception in the second half. Mm-hmm. Let me pull up the defensive stats here. Go to the glasses. He had seven, uh, seven tackles, which led the team. Four solo tackles and one interception. I thought, especially in the second half when UNC was trying to put the game away, mm-hmm. he was flying in for some uh, tackles right on the goal line, made some big plays. Shout out to him. A backup safety. Big plays for UNC. Sean, your player of the game. My player of the game is uh, Ty Chandler. Um, definitely had a, a pretty good game. Uh, Average four yards of carry, which, you know, as a running back, that'll get you paid right there. Um, you know, if you can get the ball and fall forward for four, that's, that's, a, that's a win all day long. Uh, he had 12 carries, 53 yards, one touchdown, and the big catch um, at the beginning of the game to, uh, you know, kind of give us a, 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 a kick in the door, um, if you will. Um, for the game, and you know he he continues to show up every week. Um, they use him a little different this week in the passing game, which you know I think was a plus for us. And uh, shout out to Longo for really uh, being creative and getting him in the pass game. And he's breaking some tackles. He's running tough. Yeah, he's he, running he, a lot he's tougher doing pretty than I well. have seen. Yeah, and so you're seeing more from Ty Chandler this year with, yeah. from, in these most recent games, which is great. You need that run game. You need to get back to that. Mm-hmm. All right, producer John, your player of the game. 
My player of the game today is Trey Morrison, another guy who we haven't mentioned much this season, but he's a veteran back there. He's played a lot of snaps. That turnover into touchdown that he generated was another one that helped UNC kind of pull away in this game. Ross, you mentioned that touchdown by the defense. That was the second one under Mac Brown. The other was Storm Duck pick six against Temple in the Military Bowl. Mm -hmm. So good to see another defensive play turn into a six for North Carolina. Trey Morrison, my player of the game. And he had six tackles, five solo tackles. UNC's three safeties, Cameron Kelly, Jacoris Conley, and Trey Morrison, led the team in tackles. Yeah. When your safeties lead the team in tackles, what's that mean? <laughs> it means the D-line <laughs> need to be doing a little better. <laughs> yeah, it means your linebackers. I mean, they played well today, though. I can't say yeah. it, but, I mean, our safeties are nosy. They get up into action, too. So I, I can't say that the D-line didn't play well today, um, but, you know, the Sometimes it does. You don't want your safety to lead the team in tackles. That means yeah. they're getting through the D line, they're getting through the linebackers, the missed tackles. But uh, you're right. Uh, of course, Conley does play close to the line. I also saw Don Chapman playing some cornerback. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're moving some things around in the um, defensive secondary. secondary. I have to ask Jay Bateman about that this weekend. Okay, questions, comments, get them in. If you have any questions <laughs> about this team, got two big games coming up at home before UNC plays Notre Dame, Florida State, Miami, Notre Dame. Before we get into our key takeaways, John, do we have any more questions or any, any some, co some comments, guys? We love the comments. We love audience participation. This question is from YouTube. It's from Mark Williams. He asked Sean, what did you think of the little we saw of DJ Jones today? DJ Jones, a guy who's been struggling with injury, but he had a couple carries. What did you see from DJ Jones? I'm glad to see him actually, you know, get in the game and get some carries. Um, I was wondering about Caleb, but I know he has the the rib, rib injury, but DJ Jones, I mean, it's a guy that I think they've been high on mm -hmm. uh, for a while. Like you said, the injuries kind of plagued him, but when he got in, you know, he made a, made the most of his uh, opportunities. Um, had a big big run on, uh, I think it was like third and two, third and one. Um, you know, he kind of had to bounce to the outside and, you know, got some yards after contact and got the first down. So, you know, anytime you get yards after contact as a running back, you know, that's that's big. And uh, his ability to put his foot in the ground is, is good, too. Yeah, a little more shifty back. He had seven carries for 30 yards for 4.3. Not, not bad. 11 yard uh, long there. Guess how many carries Sam had? Eight. This is 13. I'm not sure. Some of those might be sacks. Yeah. But he still ran a bunch yeah. and was getting hit so much. I think much. they had one, like, actual design, design run yeah, that hit. I remember. His longest, his longest was 32. I do remember that long run. But Sam's list is 13 carries. Not sure if that is half of those are sacks. So he did get sacked, I think, five times, which, which we'll talk about a little more here. But, yeah, I would love to see DJ Jones and, you know, Todd break open the game next week and, you know, we establish a run game. <laughs> that, that would be awesome. Yeah. We're sensing a theme here. All right, John, any more questions, yeah. comments? This one is from Kerry on Facebook. He asks, how can we prepare for a struggling FSU team next week? This is a theme for North Carolina this season. They have these big wins, and then they come back with a letdown the following week. Sean, if you're in that locker room, you're for, if you're a senior leader on this team, what are you saying to your teammates to get ready for next week, Florida State? I mean, we had to put this win behind us. I mean, it was a good win. It's a win we should have gotten. You know, like you said, you know, we, it should be an easy win. Yeah. Uh, kind of was. You know, it felt like, you know, we, we were excited we won this game. But, you know, if I'm in the locker room,